Hello everyone, and welcome to Python programming practice. In this episode, we're going to be covering Leet Code number 17, Letter Combinations of a Phone Number. This is classified as a medium difficulty problem, so it might take a bit of doing to figure out a solution. I'll start by reading the problem description. Given a string containing digits from two to nine inclusive, return all possible letter combinations that the number could represent. Return the answer in any order. A mapping of digit to letters, just like the telephone buttons, is given below. Note that one does not map to any letters. And then they have a little image of a telephone keypad. So basically, on a telephone, each number maps to several possible letters, with one not being anything and zero not being anything. So like the number two can be A, B, or C, three can be D, E, or F, etc. And it goes through all the letters in the alphabet. Uh, nine happens to be able to be four different things. So let's see some of the examples here. Example one, if we pass digits two, three, we have to return all possible combinations of letters for those two digits. So I guess two has three possible things. It can be A, B, or C. And then three also has three possible things. It can be D, E, or F. So that means we need three times three things that we're going to return. Because each A needs to be matched up with all the possibilities that three could be. So we need A, D, A, E, A, F, and then we need B, E, B, D, B, F, C, D, C, E, C, F. And so that's not too bad because we're only past two digits, but permutations get big really fast. So uh, if we're past big strings, this, this could get pretty crazy. Um, let's see the second example. Digits is an empty string. So in the case of an empty string, we just pass an empty list. That's fine. Um, and in this one, we're just past digits equals two. Well, that's easy because that's just one thing. So we just return what the possibilities of two can be. It seems like they should have given a maybe bigger example, but I guess that would result in some pretty big output. So let's see what the constraints are. So we're going to be past an input digits list or string, I should say, between zero and four. So I suppose that means the kind of longest list of sequences or we will be asked to generate is something like three to the fourth power. So three times three times three times three for each of the letters passed in. Um, I guess it could actually be four to the fourth power if for some reason we were past four nines because that has four possibilities, but the the list isn't going to be super long at least, so that's good to know. And also, digits i is a digit in the range from two to nine. So we're not gonna be past any weird cases or corner cases that aren't valid numbers at all. So let's pull up a whiteboard and see how we might go about approaching this problem. So if we're given an input string of something like two, three. Well, the first thing we need to do is find all the possibilities that two can be. So that's something we're probably just going to have to keep track of the possibilities for each number in something like a dictionary. So for two, it's A, B, C. For three, it's D, E, F. And we'll have to start by basically looking at this first character and then storing in a list each of those prefixes. So we'll store like A, B, C in a list. And then when we go to the next thing in our input string, we'll have to, for each of these things that we already stored, we'll have to append every possibility for this next character on it. So for everything in here, we need to append everything in here onto it. So that sounds kind of like a double for loop type situation where for each thing in one list, we're doing something for everything in another list. So we've dropped back to the code editor here and let's think about how we can go about coding that up. So we need to start with that mapping of numbers to their corresponding values. I prepared a little dictionary for that in advance so that we don't have to spend time writing code for it. I don't think that's the correct indentation level though. 
So with our phone map here in hand, let's see about coding up a solution. Now, I think right away we'll just take care of the case where we're past an empty string because that's kind of a weird corner case. So if digits is just an empty string, we saw in the examples that we just return an empty list for that. So we'll just take care of that corner case immediately. Um, let's go ahead and return the empty list. So we can start by initializing a list that are just the different possibilities for the first character in the input. So let's do that. We'll say numbers equals list of whatever the first thing we were passed is. So that will be phone map of digits zero. So digit zero is whatever the first number is. So let's say it was a two. And then we're getting the phone map of two, so that gets us A, B, C. So that is what this would be if two is our first thing. And if you run list on a string, it separates it into a list of each of the constituent uh, characters in the string. So after running this list on phone map, map digit zero, if we were past two as the first digit, this would now be a list that is A, comma B, comma C. So that's basically exactly what we showed on the whiteboard that we wanted to do or that we would want to start with for the first character. So now we basically have to loop through any additional digits beyond the first one. So for digit in digits starting from the next one, so index zero was the first one, index one is the next one. So if there's anything after that. So now we have to update our numbers list taking all of the things we have in there so far, and then for every single one of the possibilities for the new number, we have to add an entry that is the old entry plus that new entry. So this is where that kind of double for loop situation we talked about on the whiteboard is coming into play. And we can actually do this in a single list comprehension. It might be a little bit long, but we'll see what we can do here. So we're gonna update numbers as a list comprehension. That's going to be the old thing in numbers currently, plus the new character. So old plus new, the new character associated with the digits that we're looking at. So old plus new for old in the numbers currently, for old in numbers. And we want to do that for each new thing in the new possibilities. And that is just the same as this, the list phone map, map digits thing. But now we're looking at this digit, digit digit, instead of the first digit zero. So basically what this is doing now is taking whatever was in the old numbers and adding on that new bit associated with our new digit for everything in the old numbers and for every new possibility in the new digit. So although this is a bit of a long and perhaps can somewhat confusing looking uh, list comprehension here, it's essentially doing our double for loop for old in numbers for new in this new digits list. And so as this goes through each digit, the numbers list on each iteration is going to grow a lot because it's being expanded for every new possibility in the new digit. So, so then at the end, we just have to return numbers. So as long as we didn't make any errors, this should work. So let's go ahead and click submit on that one. And as long as there are not any errors in the, oh wait, we got an error, invalid syntax on this line. Well, duh, this is the long confusing line. So oh, for new in list and list, oh, I think we have an extra level of nesting that is not needed here because we copied and pasted that from elsewhere, but we should just need phone map of the current digit because the digit is the number, we get the phone map of it. Yeah, that, that should be right now. So let's uh, go ahead and click submit again. And as long as those errors were taken care of, we should have a working solution. So let's pull over and see what the result was. It looks like it did pass this time, so we did it right. And we got a runtime of 28 milliseconds, which was faster than about 82% of other Python 3 submissions. 
So I hope this provided some insight into how you could approach this problem and also how to use list comprehensions to essentially implement a double for loop. So thanks for watching and keep coding.